And one of the coolest things that I've seen uh, Adobe add to their software in quite some time is the warp stabilizer that's been added to uh, Adobe After Effects CS 5.5. And that alone, I would think, is worth the price of the upgrade just for that feature because it does some pretty amazing things. And it does it in the background while you're doing other things. Let's take a look at this piece of uh, footage that it was just a handheld shot that I took with my DSLR when I was in uh, Graz, Austria. And it isn't bad all by itself if we take a look at it here. And, uh, you know, it's just your, your typical uh, guy standing on the corner waiting to get run over kind of shot. So it could be better, though. Uh, so let's take a look and see what happens uh, when we've got just the warp stabilizer on it. And I've got one rendered out here. You can see that it, it really locks it down. There's just very little movement at all just because there was some camera movement. But it cropped it. It really stabilized everything. It works pretty well. Let's take a look at it here. If I apply it to this layer, and I just come over here where the tracking and stabilizing panel, I click Stabilize Motion, and then I can just walk away and uh, do something else. I can go in here and work on another project. I can do whatever I want, because this will work all in the background. You don't have to you know, shut down the machine or sit there and babysit it. It will keep working while you're doing something else. So it's rendering all the math. It's figuring all of that out. Now, there's a problem, though, that I have noticed. Its defaults are smooth motion and subspace warp and then stabilize crop and auto scale, which is fine if you want a smooth motion. I want this to have no motion at all, which it doesn't seem to be worried about right now. I don't want subspace warp because I'll show you why in a minute. So I'm just going to position, scale, and rotation, and then I'm going to let it stabilize, crop, and auto scale. That way, if you've ever stabilized footage in the past, you notice you may get it stabilized, but then you get these weird artifacts that show up around the edge, or it looks like you've been moving the background more than the camera. <laughs> But this automatically scales it, so it, it crops all of that out of there. So let's take a look at it. It's already done while I've been talking. So we can do a quick RAM preview and see how quick that worked, how nice that worked. And that's, that's good. Now, I've got a little longer clip of this where the train went by a little, little longer than that. And you can see letting it do the subspace just kind of uh, doesn't work. So we'll see it'll start to distort as the train goes by. Then it kind of freaked out. And then it turned it into Disneyland Toontown or something here. Just did this really crazy thing. So you have to be careful with the type of footage that you're using when you use the uh, subspace warp option. And that's primarily if you have a wide angle lens and there's some distortion while you're moving, it will try to correct some of that. But sometimes it creates a little more of a problem than it helps. There's a lot of advanced features in here that you can drill down into as far as its analysis and everything. We won't get into that in this movie. I've got another shot here that I let it do the smooth motion because this is a handheld pan. So let's take a look at what it looked like before, and we can see it's handheld and a little jostled, a little bit of rotation. It just looks like somebody handheld their camera and panned it around. So let's see what it looks like applying the warp stabilizer to it. And I really cranked up the stabilization on it. I think I went to about 300%, and that really smoothed it out. So it almost looks like I've got it on a tripod here. Still has a little bit of that handheld feel because it's not, you know, smoothly going exactly in one speed. And there's a little slight rotation there, but it still does an amazing job of stabilizing that footage. So if you haven't had a chance to check out Adobe After Effects CS 5.5's Warp Stabilizer, definitely grab some of your handheld footage and give it a shot.